Today on the Infinite Loop Show, Brazil loves Steve more than we do. Yeah, but we sell our organs for Apple products. Because that won't turn out badly. Well, at least the Department of Justice isn't suing Apple. Or are they? Well, find out on this episode of the Infinite Loop Show. <laughs> Hello, welcome to the Infinite Loop Show, episode number 12. I'm Michael Gaines. Hi, Mike. <laughs> Who are you? I'm Casey Coughlin, I- and I like Max. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. So, so you want, you're one of those fanatics? No. <laughs> um. Yes. Maybe. Yes. Yes. Hi. I'm Casey, and I'm an addict. I know. I can't stop buying these things. I'm in horrible debt. <laughs> no. 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 But this is the Infinite Loop Show, where we do talk about our Apple stuff. What would you mm-hmm. call it? I almost I almost said love, but that seems a little creepy. Because yeah, pretty no, soon we're we gonna certainly start licking do not iPhones. talk about that on this no, show. No, we don't. That is not where that happens. But you know what we do talk about? Hmm. People that sell their kidneys for Apple products. No, yeah, you think I'm a fanatic? Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is crazy. Some 17-year-old in China sells his kidney for an iPad and an iPhone And now he's in renal failure. This is sad. (laughs) Yeah, no, uh, it's, 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 I don't know. At first it sounded really funny. And then you find out that (laughs) the organs he has left are like, failing and he really could have used another kidney or you know I, I, all right so i understand that people love this stuff but this is this is just crazy because i mean in all seriousness this this kid's in a lot of serious trouble and it's looking like he's not going to survive this and all for a, uh, an ipad an iPhone? well i mean what what can you do i don't think that's it's it, it, this can't be put on Apple. This isn't oh, their no, fault, no, no. No, obviously. It's not. You know, it's not like, oh well, if Apple products weren't so fucking desirable, you know, maybe <laughs> we wouldn't have kids cutting themselves up on the black market. <laughs> um, but I, I think it's it's you know, a he's a teenager. He's got bad judgment or the best judgment, um, and clearly some parents are watching out for their children and what they're doing. Well, the articles that I've read, I, I've pieced together that the the person who did this had gambling debts and gave That's the, seventeen already. <clears throat> no, 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 not not the seventeen year old, but the person who did it to the seventeen year old. Oh, so oh. they gave the seventeen year old if if the um, uh, if the numbers are right, it was the equivalent of twenty five hundred dollars American. Oh, okay. And he yeah, sold the kidney for like twenty two thousand American. So that's like that. what their kidneys are going for about these days? It, it's crazy. I've been reading a little bit about this, and the, the black market for organs out there is, is just nuts. People wake up in their sleep and they lose a uh, an organ? Mm, well, yeah. TJ is just down the street. <laughs> I could do this if I wanted to. Don't do that. Oh, okay. That's That's quite illegal. You'll get in trouble. I'll just but, take out another credit card. Then. I mean, how? See, I don't understand. Maybe the desire for these products are different out there than they are here. Maybe they have some sort of different feel for these things. I don't know. But to to give up a, I think it's probably the same amount of desire, but probably less options as far as well. Uh, he's seventeen. His his options for making money are severely limited, anyways, yeah. or or even getting up money. At 17, you have probably little to no credit history. So you're Mm -hmm. not going to be getting a loan. You're not going to be getting credit cards. You are just starting your, you know, work career. So your job prospects are very limited Mm -hmm. to, like, restaurants or 
or something like that, you know, just entry level stuff. So, I mean, you're very limited. And, you know, if you are so driven to think that you had to have this stuff, I mm. mean, you're going to go outside the normal venues for, you know, getting money. Yeah. Well, it must have been the retina display. Mm. It I was resolutionary. Oh. All right. Okay. Next. <laughs> All right, all right. Well, a little update on the Apple virus, people. It's okay. It's okay. Unless you're on 10.5, psych. Why? What's that? What, what uh, about 10.5? <laughs> Apple's update, their software update that patched the Java hole that uh, Flashback was taking advantage of, apparently uh, it's only for 10.6 and 10.7. Snap. Sure, yeah. So if you're on Leopard... Uh, if you were kind of on the fence, yeah. <laughs> Now's <laughs> as good a time as any, people. Uh, Unless you don't have an Intel. Then you need to go out and buy a new one. Mm, I know there are some people out there that still have their G5s and love them. Well, they're going to love them even more now. <laughs> I don't know. I, I couldn't live with a with a, a PowerPC Mac at this point. I mean, there's so much work no, with me. That you can't, I mean, as yeah. a developer, I can't do anything on a PowerPC. Power, power, power well, everything, like all new software, they just won't even run. Like, right. you know, they, they're... They've been forcing people to upgrade, and, and it gets worse and worse with every iteration, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, and this is just kind of, it almost makes you wonder if it's it's another just little dig by Apple, maybe, to force people to upgrade off of Leopard. Yeah. You know, because, I mean, like I said, every iteration, Snow Leopard, they kind of, you know, still cater to the PowerPC people. Lion, not at all. And like every iteration, it gets stricter and stricter. Like, okay, you gotta have two gigs instead of mm -hmm. one gig of RAM. You gotta have an Intel processor now. You need to upgrade. Come on, people. So essentially, what happens is this thing just removes the the malware, right? Uh, yeah. Well, it um, the Apple update patches or it updates the Java mm -hmm. uh, where. Flashback is taking advantage of a hole in Java that was actually patched by Oracle some months ago. But um, unless you actually went to their site and downloaded it individually, the uh, Java update wasn't incorporated into Apple's system updates until uh, just last week. Um, yeah, so this is not that, the first time I've heard of Apple delaying an update that has been out for a while. I don't understand what, what takes them so long to put some of these important updates out. They, right. All they have to do is, is grab it and package it up with the rest of the stuff, right? I mm. mean, why would they sit on that? It's yeah. not like it's a terribly complicated process. When the when the system update detects that the malware is on your system, it, it, it eradicates it, but this little ghost of Steve Jobs points his finger at you on the screen and says, Told you no administrator passwords. Don't do that. Foxconn employee. <laughs> some random Foxconn employee says, yeah, the iPhone's coming in October, which sort of negates what the recruiter said last week that the new iPhones were coming in June. Mm -hmm. Which we, we, we knew that wasn't going to happen. June is just way too, uh, too right. early. Right. But really, I, I mean, I wouldn't put any of my stock in any of the Foxconn employees. <laughs> At this point, since suddenly they all have information and they're all coming forward with it, it kind of makes them all seem like they're just vying for the spotlight and any freaking attention. And we're just giving it to them. You know, no, like, yeah. oh, you, you have an idea of when it's going to come out? Oh, tell me. Like, no, they don't. I could just see somebody like Geraldo Rivera outside the Foxconn yeah, building. Yeah, totally. Oh, we're at the Foxconn. We're at the Foxconn building, <laughs> waiting Indeed. for employees to come out to get information on the totally. new iPhone. These yeah. low-level, entry-level, you know, factory workers, they've got the inside scoop because Tim Cook was here just, you know, a couple <laughs> weeks ago, and he whispered into their ear what the release date was going to be, and now he's telling bloggers around the world. Well, October does that. seem much more realistic than June. So, I mean, that, that's what we yeah. were extrapolating from. That's all what, the yeah, well, that's what we're thinking. So, so we're, he's... Stating the obvious and getting, you know, <laughs> the limelight for it. Yeah. So. Uh. 
Oh well. Oh, well, well um, if you're a uh, Android developer, you can join the uh, the horrible, horrible developer world that uh, we enjoy as iOS <laughs> developers by you know getting a thirty percent cut from uh, Amazon there as well. So that's what they're taking. What was it before? I don't think it was any cut before. Oh, so now they're taking I a third. Think, oh, now they must be pissed. So now Amazon is really taking a page out of Apple's book mm-hmm. and, uh, yeah, taking a 30% cut of all app sales from the Amazon Android marketplace mm-hmm. for themselves. So we're all even so in your face. This is exactly what the Android developers are making fun of Apple for. Said, oh, yeah, you yeah, iOS yeah, that, developers are getting thirty oh. percent. Well, now, yeah, why would you do that? And Apple's, you know, soaking up all of your profits, and how horrible. In the meantime, people seem to think that this stuff just, like, I don't know, falls off of trees and out of thin air and and uh, runs by itself. Yeah, right. Why do? Why are we even paying for apps? Why? Why do I have to pay for software and apps? I mean, what? <laughs> I, I just find it funny that logically you can't run any kind of business at all, no matter how big or small, uh, off of nothing. You have to charge mm-hmm. one way or the other. And so you charge Everybody for the apps. Needs and, models. Yeah, you charge for the apps and you give the developers you know, their cut and you keep your cut. It, it's, it seems mm-hmm. fair. It's no different yeah. than if you're brokering something. No, we can't all be Instagram. I mean, come on. <laughs> No, we can. But you know what we can be hmm. is we can be a uh, a generic term. Uh, there's a report on Apple Insider, and I don't quite agree with this, but they're saying that no. Apple has to protect their brand because the word iPad is going to become generic, like yeah. Kleenex and yeah. Band-Aid. No. I totally disagree with this because anything with an I in front of it mm-hmm. is synonymous with apple and apple only like i don't mm-hmm. hear people saying well i want to buy a windows imac you, you never hear that never well you never hear like windows synonymous i mean with when normal people say like i i want to go buy like a pc they mm-hmm. don't they don't say the name of the operating system anyways right right so i i think that this is totally wrong and i don't agree with it at all i I I have not yet heard, to my recollection, anybody using the word um, iPod for generic term for an MP3 player. I have oh. heard that. Have that, you? That that I've heard. Like most people, they just say, "Oh, it's." If they don't say iPod explicitly, they say it's, "Oh, it's an iPod like thing or iPod thing." Mm. And I could maybe potentially see that happen with the iPad, but so far. When when speaking with you know normal run of the mill people, it's not um, they they kind of know the difference. Mm-hmm. I mean, they might ask, "Oh, is that an iPad?" Like to somebody else who has one. Oh well, you maybe, know? but they're they're still but talking if, about if it as a product. But if they're own if they own one and they're telling somebody else about it, like if they got some generic Android tablet as a gift, even they don't even know, right? Mm-hmm. They're not going to say, "Oh, this is my iPad." They say, "Oh, it's it's a tablet thing." Yeah, tablet. I, I've seen much many more people use the word tablet than iPad as a generic term. Right. It's usually it's almost exclusively when they ask, you know, you about it or or whatever. Um, but I I've even heard people when they ask about my iPad say like, "Oh, is that a notebook? Is that, mm-hmm. you know, um, but generally, when when I think when it's kind of interchangeable is when they're asking. Mm-hmm. It's like, is that an iPad? Right. And really, you could say that about anything again, <laughs> you know? You could say that about any old phone that kind of looks like an iPhone. Is that an iPhone? No, it's a da-da-da. Oh, yeah. so it's an iPhone. Like, no, it it begins and ends there with the entry question, <laughs> and they don't continue going like, is that an iPhone? No, it's a Galaxy Note. Oh, so a big iPhone. Okay, great. <laughs> no. 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 Pens are not Bix and no. It just doesn't happen that way. I don't I don't see this becoming a problem, so I have to disagree with that. No, yeah. Oh well. 
Um, but it's okay because Apple is apparently gaining market share. Again. Well, we kind of knew this because of the whole flashback debacle. Oh, Since yeah. we got viruses now, we must be <laughs> third of all PC manufacturers. Mm -hmm. We were on top a few years ago. We've we've dropped down a third, which is fine. But we're still on. now. This is this is not market share for like Mac OS versus Windows. This is no, 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 no. PC it's a PC, PC manufacturers because yeah, number one spot is HP and number mm -hmm. two is Dell, and they're both Windows. So it's not it's not the Windows versus Mac debate. It's it's PC manufacturers. Mm -hmm. How did HP get to number one? I don't know anybody that owns an HP laptop. Everybody I know, I know owns Dells if they're Windows no, machines. No, like when I worked at Best Buy, um, I think HP was probably the number one seller. And then maybe Toshiba number two. Dell wasn't even number two, but hmm. um, HP was definitely number one. It's 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 kind of like the 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 fat middle, you know, if you will. Oh, I know what you like mean. Yeah, the high end of PCs would probably be like a Sony or something, and then the low end you've got your Toshibas. Um, the middle, like every man, is is going for HPs. Hmm. So, well, okay. AT and T is unlocking iPhones that are out of contract. This is interesting. I think we mentioned it once before, maybe a uh, last show or something like that. Mm -hmm. But now we we know that people are getting this done, and it doesn't take a lot. You have to call them up, and they ask you a, a couple of questions to see if you um, uh, if if you have a, a a valid reason to have it done. Like if if you're actually out of contract, if you're in good standing on your bill. Then what happens is, now this is this is a little tricky. Some people said you have to do this, and some people say you don't. They're saying that what you have to do is back up and restore your phone, and on the restore, mm. your phone will oh. be unlocked. Uh, that doesn't that doesn't sound correct at all. I, yeah, it doesn't sound correct to me at all either. <laughs> because I don't see how a restore would unlock your phone. It, it, they're just two magic systems auto magic. Well, Apple is magic. So no, really, I I just don't understand how that would happen. Yes, and then the AT and T store says, "Take these magic beans with you, and poof, you will be unlocked, and your but phone will be resolutionary." Wow! I I, uh, I was going to do this until I realized I have nowhere else to go with my phone. Really? Right? Aren't you rushing to like T Mobile or, or you know Sprint. Mobile PCS or whatever? It's a PCS. I know I am. No, I keep no, no, seeing no, these no, billboards no. that everybody's going to Mobile PCS. I, apparently, I'm missing out. Now the mobile PCS uh, store in my area already <laughs> closed down. We're not doing so well. No, um, I I said in one show that I was going to go to Verizon at some point because of their coverage and and their four G is a little better. And then I realized that you can't do the data and talking at the same time, which is actually something I do quite often. Oh, hello. What? You just now realize that? No, no. It's one of those things that you knew a year or so uh, yeah, ago. Yeah, and then you forgot. And then you just sort of forget after a while. Yeah. And you go, oh, wait, there's that problem. Well, yeah, where you <laughs> there's that thing that I do all the time that I couldn't do on Verizon. Well, you, you, you again, this, this is one of those things that I gripe about. It's like, well, what century are we in? And we still can't do this? Yeah. Really? No. Get I, off of that system. I don't understand why they can't do that, but whatever. So um, apparently Waz is doing some uh, spring cleaning, though. I saw that. What's he doing? He, uh, he's selling a Macintosh 128K prototype mm -hmm. with the Twiggy drive uh, on eBay, evidently. Now, tell everybody what the Twiggy drive is, because I know, right. and you know, but not everybody so else knows. So, the Twiggy drive was kind of a nickname given to a um, a really thin drive they put into the early Macintoshes. Um, it's for a, what is it, five and a quarter inch? Mm -hmm. Five and a quarter. Floppy. Um, I was going to say five and a half. <laughs> I want it to be an even number. Three and a half. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, five and a quarter floppy drive in the uh, in the the same you know Macintosh uh, you know the the iconic kind of all in one yeah, Macintosh. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, the very early ones uh, before they went to three and a half or what have you, mm -hmm. they had uh, this Twiggy drive and it was a, f a five and a quarter floppy drive which was just very very thin so that they could kind of pack everything in there 
Mm -hmm. everything was in this little teeny tiny box. And yet this is the first time people complain that Apple just does things like they get rid of floppy drives and the iMacs and such. This was the first machine where they said, you know what, we're going to three and a half inch drives. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. and they got it rid of the five and a quarters. Yeah, they didn't stay on that. And I, I want to say that it like majority of the reason was that the Tweed drive just wasn't very reliable. That um, it was it was iffy and and I want to say that kind of prompted along with the design aesthetics that Steve right. just didn't like the look of that slot kind of interrupting the whole design of of the box mm -hmm. but i want to say the twiggy drives weren't very reliable and so that kind of contributed to the fact that they yanked those out fairly quickly yeah and then they put in the three and a half so the twiggy drives are used in the leases right yeah, well, the Lisa it was much bigger, and they had more room, and they they put a ton of stuff in there, and it was also more um, marketed towards like the high end kind of crowd. It was more expensive. They put higher end components, more memory, you know, everything mm -hmm. in there, bigger drives, um, and and so it sold for a lot more. The iMac they were really kind of trying to keep it within a certain price point to really market towards you know, um, general people who wouldn't maybe normally buy a PC or people who wouldn't certainly wouldn't buy a PC for their home, mm -hmm. for home use. And so they're kind of going after two different markets with two totally different design aesthetics. Mm -hmm. um, again, the Macintosh was just trying to fit everything within that box, which they designed the, the case first and then had to stuff all or figure out a way to get all the components in after the fact. And the Lisa was kind of the reverse. Yeah. Where, it, you know, they, they knew what components were going to go in and then they designed the box around it. Okay. There, uh, speaking of, of new computers, <laughs> the, <laughs> yes. um, there's, again, rumors. Now, this seems a little more credible than the whole iPhone 5 and all that. The um, the rumor going around now is that new MacBook Pros with Ivy Bridge are going to drop within three weeks. And there was a big scare yesterday because the the Apple Store was down. And people mm -hmm. are going, oh, 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 are they going to oh, announce it? Oh, there it is. There it is. Yeah. And they didn't. As a matter no. of fact, they got rid of the sticky with the Comic Sans font. They put a new little logo <laughs> up, a little, little label that says, nope. And the, why, the why that, that particular thing got so many blog posts and... <laughs> Like everybody reported on, oh, the sticky's gone. Look, they've revamped their sorry word down page. <laughs> like that's newsworthy. Well, it is. Apparently, it is. We're no, talking about. <laughs> it's really not. No, but um, we we'll we'll see. It's just supposed to be MacBook Air like. Um, we don't that know. That's pretty but, awesome. Yeah, but Ivy Bridge and and uh, we don't know what's going to go on with ports. I, with the MacBook Pro, who knows whether or not it's really going to have a, a an optical drive or not. I'm yeah, one of those people you know, where like, I love my optical drive because I use it every once in a while. But then I think, mm -hmm. oh, is this the time for, for me to drop it? Because, yeah, the Pro you kind of think as like the workhorse that has everything. Mm -hmm. And so if anything still had one or was like the last to drop it, I would think it would be the Pro. Yeah. And don't so we don't know what's going to happen, but within you know what weeks, I'd really we'll... like to see what? now after using um, mine for a while is more than one Thunderbolt port. Really. Why do you have any Thunderbolt uh, op, uh, accessories? No, but <laughs> um, it's the only video out, you know, oh. and so you only have say in just in my circumstance, I want to use two monitors. I got to get some kind of crazy uh, USB adapter now mm -hmm. to go to the second monitor because I only have one video out. Right. Say, so right now, all no matter where I am, at work or at home, my Thunderbolt port is taken up by one monitor. Mm -hmm. If I had two, I'd do two, but at least one. So say then I do get one of these whenever they you know become mainstream, Thunderbolt um, external hard drives, where am I going to put it? Well, here's a question. If you get a monitor, would, I, I don't know how these monitors are designed, but wouldn't the monitor act as a hub? Only the Apple display. The Only the Apple Thunderbolt display. Oh, okay. I can't imagine any other um, third-party display maker putting Thunderbolt in there and then also 
you know, building in the technology for it to um, daisy chain and power uh, a second monitor. Mm, I don't know. Um, for the lore in the chat room says you can daisy chain Thunderbolt devices. I don't know if that's part of the spec. I, it may be. It is, but it depends on, I mean, they have to be using Thunderbolt. But, yeah. It can't be mini display. And even the external hard drives that are out there now with Thunderbolt, um, I, I mean, they're, they're so few and far between. I don't know. Are, do they have... Because, yeah, part of the, the Apple spec is to be able... That's the whole idea, that it pushes um, power as well as data and video mm -hmm. along and that you can daisy chain. Okay. All right. Well, I haven't... I still don't have a Thunderbolt machine. <laughs> or so. they could make, like, a Thunderbolt hub, mm -hmm. like a little USB hub that goes into my one port, and then so then it gives you, like, four or something other Thunderbolt ports. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying... If this is my new USB, I need a lot more of them. Right. Okay. Like right now. Yeah. Like right now. Now? But now. Now? What about now. then? No, now. What happened to then? It's coming okay, soon. Okay, now. Hey, so like I mentioned at uh, the top of the show, apparently, and this, it kills me. Oh, uh, what? Apparently, Brazil loves Steve Jobs more than we do. <laughs> now, why is this? They are already naming one of their streets J uh, Steve Jobs Avenue. Okay. It, what, is this in the capital? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. I think it's just some street. Some street? It's Joe Bob Street. <laughs> so, uh, so at one point it was like 7... Seventh it doesn't Avenue even say. It doesn't even say where or like if it's a big street or anything. It's a street, and now it's going to be named Steve Jobs Avenue. <laughs> it's going to be. Do you really need to? Do you really need more information than that? I don't know, but yep. you know that people are going to be making pilgr pil pilgrimages there. <laughs> right. You know. I you, can't you talk go today, and to I'm not the... even drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should start. Maybe I should. <laughs> so yeah, no, I mean Brazil's just like a hop, skip, and a jump away from Cupertino. Sure. You know, after you hit the mothership, you just turn right around, hit up Brazil, and uh, go home. Road trip. Immense road trip. <laughs> you just got that little Panama Canal to, <laughs> to worry about. <laughs> thank you, thank There's a way to drive across there, isn't there? Um, I'm sure there sure. is. Sure, why not? Go the bridge. <laughs> yeah. The big news is that the U.S. government is filing antitrust against Apple for their ebook pricing. And yeah. I've been... I, I've been reading about this. I'm not quite sure, and I'm not saying this just because I'm an Apple fan. I, I'm really not sure this is the right thing to be done. The way that I... I what? I mean, it, it kind of feels like we saw this coming. Okay, so th this is this is what I understand about this whole ebook pricing thing, is that what Amazon was doing is that they were they were buying stuff wholesale, but then selling it l for less. And so it was. So the authors felt that it was diminishing the values of the books that were being sold. So what Apple did is they said, "We're going to step in, mm -hmm. and we're going to do this model that you that that the publishers want, where the publishers say we want this book to be X, and then Apple mm -hmm. says, okay, well we'll sell it for that, but we're going to take our thirty percent.' And yeah. the publishers went, well, that's a better deal than what Amazon is doing because they're killing the business." Yeah, no, um, I don't know that they were, uh, Amazon was buying them wholesale, but they were sell setting a ceiling. Yeah. So Amazon right away were wanted to sell them cheap and much, you know, to the chagrin of the publishers. Mm -hmm. um, and they, I think, and I don't know if this is still the case, I don't think it is, but um, they they set a ceiling to where, like, no books were over nine ninety nine. Right. Right. And so, you know, if you want to be on the, the, the Kindle store and you want your book on all these devices, because, you know, at the time it was, it was the Kindle and that was it. And even until just recently, you know, I, well, it could still be the top selling ebook reader. Yeah, well, and it probably is. But, but still, the, the point that I don't understand after reading, I read a, a lot about this. And as, as a matter of fact, I was re reading a lot of, about it a year ago mm -hmm. or so when this whole thing started mm -hmm. is that 
Apple is doing what the publishers wanted. Right, yeah. For a change. It's kind of change. the opposite of what they did with the music industry, where they gave, <laughs> you know, the, the music industry the finger and did whatever they wanted. And and that's almost exactly what Amazon did at the beginning with the ebook stuff. Mm -hmm. Is gave them the finger and said, we've got the platform. Do you want to be on it or not? You're going to play by our rules, mm -hmm. which sounds a lot like what Apple would normally do, except in this instance, <laughs> Apple did the exact opposite. They, they did and, what the publishers wanted. Right, exactly. They're like, hey, you want to sell this shit for 30 bucks? Great, do it. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing, is that now the Department of Justice is saying that they're, they're charging Apple along with some publishers for a collusion of price fixing. Yeah. But I'm not sure that's really what's going on here. Unless the, and, and again, all the articles that I read said there is some s s stuff missing. Like, mm -hmm. th like They're not telling us the whole story. There, there are other th parts to this that we don't know. And the whole monopoly thing doesn't work because Amazon was the monopoly on the ebook readers until the Nook was released. Mm -hmm. and, and so Apple comes around and they say, well, we're going to do things like this to help you guys, to, to, to help you make the money that you want and yeah. keep the value of your product. And again, I'm not saying this is an Apple fan. It just seems like this is the way you want to do things. Now, there's one article I read and I really don't remember where it was from. But they said that the reason why Amazon sold stuff cheap was because they wanted the market share. They wanted people to say, oh, yes. you want to go somewhere and yes. get something cheap? Go to Amazon. Right. So I'm not quite sure what the hell Apple's getting sued um, for. Because well, everything seems there to was point... Some, there what? was some deal early on when Apple was trying to get people to come over to the the um, ebook the e or the iBook platform. Um, I want to say, and they kind of, they went over this in, um, in the Walter Isaacson book, that there was a, a deal that had to be struck early on with the publishers that they could, they could name their own price mm -hmm. and sell for whatever they wanted on the iBook store, but they had to, there was some stipulation about their pricing on the other bookstores, like either they had to pull them off there or they had to raise them or there's... Yeah. Something to where it was al almost sort of like entering a monopoly. It was that if if Apple sold something, I don't know, whatever it was, for ten bucks, mm -hmm. and another store sold the same item for eight fifty, then Apple can sell it for eight fifty. Okay, so that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, but then that still doesn't make it um, any sort of monopoly in Apple's favor. If anything, that that's handicapping Apple for. The other dudes. Look what happened in the last year or two with Borders bookstores. Mm -hmm. The whole uh, between Barnes and Noble with the Nook and especially Apple, um, Apple, Amazon with the Kindle, mm -hmm. they essentially put Borders out of business. Well, no, no, no. Borders had their uh, their ebook readers and their their ebook store. The uh, the Kobe bookstore, I believe, is oh, still uh, flourishing. Is it? Oh, I completely forgot about that. No, it's so did everyone. That's why they oh, closed well, their freaking stores. Well, the thing is, is that when you close up, I mean, I, there was a Borders around where I live. It was one of my mm -hmm. favorite bookstores because they had a lot of a, a lot of books that that Barnes and Noble didn't. Mm -hmm. And and I, now they now they really don't. <laughs> no, well, now they really don't. But my, my point being is that um, with, with all this e-pricing and everything going electronic, Borders is one of the first casualties of that whole thing. Yeah. And Barnes & Noble is still alive. Um, but for how long? I, for how long, I don't know. But, man, I, I really like going to Barnes & Noble, too. I, I, I like going no, I to bookstores. Out of, all the, the, out of both of them, like, I liked Barnes & Noble better. Um, and I think that's primarily just because of their magazine selection. But, um, yeah, no, I mean, I, I would think Barnes & Noble would be the next on the chopping block. Well, and so yeah. either they have to, you know, and they've been doing well so far. But, I mean, they have to keep adapting, you know, their nook and, and keeping up with the Kindle. Sure. Absolutely. I mean, brick and mortar, I mean, they're in a lot of trouble. But at the same, see, I always say this, is that brick and mortar stores are in trouble. But then mm -hmm. what happens when people have nowhere to go? 
Yeah. And, and like if you want a place where you can go to, a, I love going to bookstores. I like going to record stores. As a matter of fact, there was a um, there was a discussion on Google Plus just a couple days ago, day or two ago, mm-hmm. where somebody was saying, "Remember what it was what it used to be like to go into a record store." It has nothing to do with like how old you are or anything like that, but but you used to be able to physically pick up the the albums and look at them and the art, and it was mm-hmm. a great way to physically meet people and meet space, and talk <laughs> to people about music, talk to the clerk behind the counter about music. These are the things that we're missing now, because everybody buys stuff online, and I'm guilty of it too. Oh, something new was out, done, and I'll have it delivered in three days. Yeah. What I would rather do is actually go to the store. And do that. But then there's cheaper pricing. I mean, if you're going to save 30 bucks on something, well, you might as well just order it online. True. True, true, true. But anyway, I know. Back to the original point <laughs> is that at some point I felt that Amazon had a monopoly on ebooks. And so I don't understand. And, and again, I, I'm not, a, I'm, I don't have a major in business at all. I, this, to me, this seems logical that Apple was trying to do the right thing for the publishers. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. So, well, there was there was one article I read which said that nothing is going to come out of this at all, which is entirely possible. And true, Apple's got enough money to fight just about anything at this point. <laughs> That's true. So, all right, let's move on to culture, and we don't know which song our culture track is, so we're just going to go with this one. Why did I? Why did you? Why did you shush me? What? what? Nothing. <laughs> you gonna play the song? I was. <laughs> you did this. I don't know what you're doing. That's a real bad song. I don't want to use this one anymore. Did we pick this? I don't think so. What the heck is it? Let's pick another one. <laughs> is that any better? Sure, why not? <laughs> All right. <laughs> so real quick, I, I I'm a big champion of iTunes Match. I, I like the concept mm-hmm. of it, but the problem that I have with my car, and my car works off of Bluetooth, works off of USB. The problem that I've got with it is that if I'm going into a store, I take my phone with me, obviously, and then I lock it. When I get back in the car, I have to unlock the phone again, and then I have to, you know, type in your password, and then you have to, then you have to play the song again. That whole thing. I, you roll your eyes, How but it's a process. Are you, really? No, it's not a question of being lazy. It's sometimes with my phone, it takes a little while, and then you have to find where you were, and and it. No, it, you don't. You, you unlock it. You double tap, and you go back to whatever you were playing, and you hit play because it paused the minute you unplugged it. it done but my done. no, it doesn't always do that. And then and then here's the other problem that I've got with it is that iTunes match. If you're outside your Wi-Fi. It doesn't always start downloading really, really fast. Even if you're on 3G, yeah. yeah, it just it just you see the little icon on the upper left-hand corner of your phone, and it's uh, it's going. So like and a like, little buffer time. Yeah, and it's like, well, well, start the damn song. Just mm. you know, stream it. Start streaming it or something. I don't care. But I mean, how long does it take to start downloading a song? And so what I did was my my car stereo. It's a Sony. I don't know the model number, but it has a USB attachment to it. And so I put a bunch of songs on USB. And the nice thing about that is that if you forget your phone, which I never really do, but you can put at least a bunch of what I call desert island songs <laughs> in a bunch yeah. of folders. You plug it in. It's always there. And as soon as you turn your car on, picks up from where it left off. If you if you remove the USB stick and you put it in like four days later, picks up from where it left off. And so well, there you go. these are the things that... I, I don't. There was one time I was in Home Depot. As if you're watching the video, you can see I've been doing construction on this room. I would go to Home Depot and I'd be listening to a song. I'd come back in the car and I get in, unlock the phone. Then I have to wait for the Bluetooth to sync. And 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 after a while, I'm just like, I just want to play the damn song. <laughs> and so the technology. Uh, it's not so much iTunes Match itself. It's there. There's something about just. I just want to get started. But there was something I thought of, and I, I, I thought of it earlier today, and I didn't get a chance to, to test it, is that you can double tap on the home button, and you would get to probably the last track that you were playing on the music player. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So I have to try that. That might work. Oh, where it comes up on the screen, yeah. like when the uh, camera comes up. Yeah, yeah. totally. So I yeah, think that only I think that only works with the the uh, the music player that's built in, like the iTunes built in music player. I don't think right. it works with um, like Pandora or Stitcher, or Spotify, no, which are my work. my top three. <laughs> but but that's something I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to check. But um, no, it sounds like you're definitely a use case for that USB stick. You just can't freaking wait for a second. It's not a second though. There there was it it wasn't a second. It was it was there was one mm-hmm. or more times when it was a lot longer than a second. Okay. I'm serious. It really was. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what's uh Brian Tong telling us? Brian Tong is saying that he's got uh contact saying that the Mac Pro is dead. Now like currently dead like they're not even going to do one more and then kill it nope he's saying that according to his sources this is on uh cnet that the mac pro is is a goner and (sighs) i don't know we're we're gonna have to wait until june i'm I'm gonna wait until wwdc and maybe two weeks after that because you know that sometimes they announce no yeah i think it's it's too soon to tell you know the corpse is still kind of kicking around i mean it could maybe still the the problem is this the the price of the Xeon processor cost the the processor alone costs mm-hmm. more than two Mac minis. And so yeah. you start yeah. looking at things in that perspective and you go, okay, well, how much how much horsepower do you really need? And then can you get it done with like maybe a couple of network IMAX or Thunderbolted is that a verb? Yeah. IMAX. Yeah. And, yeah, you can't rack mount those at all. Well, no, you can't rack mount them. But what you can do is you can um, was it a, a, a core CPU? What mm-hmm. is it? What am I thinking of? Is a core CPU where where you can distribute your CPU processing across multiple machines? You could do it oh, that way. Oh, uh, yeah, so, not RAID, but yeah, no, 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 no it's not RAID. But they're they're no, I forgot the yeah. name of the technology, and I I know I've used it, but I but only once, but um. If you if you look at what you get for the price that you would have to pay for a Mac Pro with the price of the Xeon processor, the mm-hmm. E5, it just seems almost like you wouldn't even want to. You wouldn't yeah. want to spend that much money because you figure if if a um, if the Xeon processor alone, let's say, it costs like seventeen hundred dollars, that's just for the chip. Yeah. No, I know. Um, and then everything yeah, around go- it. Yeah, You're looking to go at like- and, and build one, build anything that performs. Forget, forget even looking good. To build something that performs at that level, you know, you're paying um, either the same amount or possibly even more than a Mac Pro, you know, costs retail. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm gonna have to see. I, I'm telling you one thing is is. I'm getting a new computer. I, I have to. This thing is, yep, it's you have it's to. starting to go, and mm-hmm. and um, and I don't mean physically. I mean the thing is still a workhorse and everything. I do the show on it. Look how look how much work I'm doing on it. But I'm I'm just starting to feel, um, mm-hmm. with with all this multimedia stuff that I'm doing live, um, mm-hmm. that I got to get something new, and soon I want an i7. Badly, developer needs chip. Badly. Yeah. Please send tell. <laughs> All right. Let's move on to stuff I want. I'm going to work on these. All right, Casey, you're up. What do you want? All right. So I saw this on, uh, I believe, TUAW. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's called the Sound Sofa. Not only is it a sweet looking modern sofa, it's got built in speakers and wait for it, an iPod dock. Oh, snap. Because do you not want every freaking piece of furniture you have to have an iPod dock? <laughs> of course. Of course not. No, I want my end table, my dresser, my desk, <laughs> my toilet. You know, I need everything to be able to sync with my phone or ipod <laughs> everything needs a damn ipod dock <laughs> yes it does but no it 
it uh, at first I thought, you know, oh, great. You know, this is going to be a kludge and a half. And how great can this? Lo-? It looks good, actually. The one thing that I want is not technology based. When I went to the mothership in 2003 for WWDC, I got a notebook. You know, th- they sell these things at the store. And it's it's. I don't know what size it is. I think it's maybe nine inches tall or something like that. They have two. There was a smaller one and a larger one. I got the larger one. Well, in the nine years since I've been there, I've actually gotten to the last page. And so I want one of those. But the thing is, is that they don't ship from the mothership. Mm, no, they don't. You have to go there. You have to make the pilgrimage. Right. I have to, to make- prove your worth. <laughs> and then you have to do the trials. And then they ask you to bring back a shrubbery, and then you bring back, and then they want another shrubbery, and <laughs> and then they want a herring. But <laughs> um, the the I, I contacted the company that makes the notebooks because mm-hmm. their name was in the back of it, and then they said no. Oh, that's you, convenient. Yeah, well, they said that no, they can't sell them directly. You have to buy them from the store. Like, eh. Oh, monopoly! You should sue. <laughs> No, but but that's what I want. Is I want I want another one of those to last me another nine years. Tell Langley to get you one. I that's right. Where is Langley? I don't know. Get me a notebook. That bum. No, but there's a there are a couple of uh, websites out there that will sell stuff that they buy at the at the Apple Mothership store. Oh yeah, and like then sell a it to you. But black it, market for the Mothership. Well, or yeah, something. but they only have the smaller one, and I don't even know if the bigger one is is even at the Mothership anymore. And this was nine years ago. So this is this is something that I want, and it's and the re- the reason why it's my favorite notebook is because it's got this really nice binder. the the um the top and the bottom, the front and back are like heavy cardboard with the Apple logo on the top. There you go. And and the the ruling is just perfect for me because I don't like like, like I all Mac products. It's quality. Damn right. All right, <laughs> all right let's move on to apps. Did we use this music already? Mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll work on this. (laughs) All right. This is where we talk about the apps that we like the most. The one that I'm going to talk about real quick is Guitar Toolkit. And you might say, wait, really? A guitar app? Yes. There's a guitar app (laughs) that not only tunes your guitar and it works really well. (gasps) Does it cook dinner too? No. Oh, I don't want it then. No, but it may make your iPad hot. You can cook awesome. an egg on it. Wait, no. my iPad's already hot. I, somebody, <laughs> Consumer Reports told me it's hot. Hot, hot, hot. But it allows you to uh, tune your guitar using the microphone, and then it has uh, different tunings for a uh, uh, guitar. So you can have the standard one. You can do the up a step, down steps. And then it also, if you can put in what chord you want if you're stuck on something. Like let's say you want a C, C sharp minor seventh something weird like that and then you can just mm-hmm. put it in and it'll tell you this is the first one the second one third one and i'll tell you how to play it and i love it love it to death there is a matching app awesome. whose name i forgot <laughs> and i'm gonna convenient. look it up it is convenient isn't it um i don't know the name of it oh it's made by the same company but they allow you to um to play sheet music well sweet yes i i love I love the uh, the two apps that are, I'm going to look for it while you t- oh Tab Toolkit that's the name of it. Oh, I think I've heard of that. Yeah, love it, love it. And as a yeah. matter of fact, you, um, there's a way that you can go to a um, website. I think it's alt- gu- guitar with an e guitari tab dot com or something like that. I don't know, but hmm. um, you can go to the website and then you can click on a song and it'll say oh like if you go through um, um, Tab Toolkit to that mm-hmm. website it'll actually suck in the sheet music into the app and then play it for you in real time it sucks it in yes it sucks it in oh. it's a technical term for downloading i see <laughs> All right, and then what? the technical term for uh push is a uh, squirt i believe <laughs> all right so my app and I'm recommending this not as a an app to get, but quite the opposite, an app to not get. Oh. Um, yes, I'm I'm helping you, the listener, because um, there's been quite a bit of fervor around this app. Um, it's called Voice Assistant. A lot of uh, bloggers and um, podcasters, what have you, are touting this. Oh, it's 
it's it's it's what we all want Siri to be. Finally, it's going to rescue us from you know the malaise and 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 the confusion of of Siri and and the constraint and what it can't do and all of this. Um, voice assistant is actually far less limited than Siri is. It's uh. not any bit the game changer. Sorry, Cult of Mac. Um, pretty much all well, it does. I mean, it looks a lot like Siri, sure, but that's not hard to replicate. Mm. Um, all it does is takes voice commands, turns it into text, and then allows you to apply that text to a message, an email, Facebook, Twitter, whatever. Anything that you can put text into, it will then put that text into. Oh, okay. The thing about that is we already have that built in. That little microphone icon on the bottom of the keyboard mm -hmm. does that. Does that. And the keyboard pops up in every app that you can put text into. Mm -hmm. So why do we have this app? Why is it a game changer? <laughs> why does Siri need to look over her shoulder every time now? Well, we don't have it on the iPhone 4. Oh, that okay. Microphone. So well, those guys, you can have it now. Yes, us losers with the iPhone 4. All right. Because <laughs> I'm waiting for the five. Yeah. Well, if you have Siri, calm down. All right. You have Siri. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. I'm sorry. I you don't. don't have Siri. No, seriously. Uh, the iPad, the, the new iPad 3. I'm sorry. The new iPad, as they <laughs> yeah. call it. <laughs> you get chastised in the Apple store if you call the iPad 3. Uh, mm -hmm. It has the, uh, the little dictation microphone. Yeah. So... Do you have that on the iPhone 4 with 5.1? No. No? No, oh. we have nothing. Huh. See, this is huh. one thing I don't like. You know okay. as well as I do that these iPhone 4s have the technology able to do that sort of thing, and yet Apple doesn't right. do it Right, no, but us. I thought you had at least the the same dictation that the iPad got with no. 5.1. No, it would be the same as like, uh, oh, I, I just almost did like a Christopher Walken there. No. No. Um, <laughs> um it's almost the same as if you had a an iPad, iPad two, I see. with five point one. You, you just don't get that that feature, and I don't like oh, that. I don't like, I, I, you know, Apple. As much as people love them, and 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 one thing I want to make sure that everybody knows about this show is that if if they do something wrong, we'll tell, we'll mm -hmm. tell you, we'll tell them, we'll tell you. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't get like up how, on our soapbox. That's right. I don't like how they take good features. And remove them from good phones, or devices. Mm. I shouldn't say phones, but devices, just for the sake of getting people to buy the new one. Because as much as I twitch and break out into a sweat when a new Apple product is released, there's a there's a little like fail safe in my brain that says, "No, don't do that. Don't buy that. Wait for the next one." <laughs> so, all right. I think my fail safe is broken. <laughs> We're gonna have to work on that. Yeah. Oh well. All right. Are we done? I guess. You guess. All right. Yeah. If you want to contact us, I am at Star Mike. Kesey is at. I'm gonna try and get this right. K A C E Y K A S O. Yay. Casey Queso on Twitter. Uh, you can find the show. Uh, Twitter ID is Infinite Loop TV, and you can email us the Infinite Loop Show at gmail dot com. And of course, yep. the Infinite Loop Show dot com. We're on Google Plus. We usually do yes. a uh, hangout after every show. So if you're watching live, we'll probably go do a hangout after this. Oh, that's right. Um, we're uh, on Facebook. We're on the internets. We're on the so internet. So wherever you can find the internets, <laughs> you can find us. That's right. Okay. Thank you for watching and listening, and we will talk to you later. Bye. <laughs>